Hello, this is Rob here from robcoven.com and I'm going to show you how to create an EPUB and a Kindle Mobi file from a Word document with perfect formatting using software called Sigil or Sigil and I'm really excited about this because it's taken me at least six months to work out how to do. So here is my new Kindle book and it's a Word document as you can see the headings are H1 style, everything else is in a normal style. It's got links, it's got images, it's got formatting like bolds, italics, it's got subheads which are in the heading 2 style. And in order to publish this on Kindle, you just go to kdp.amazon.com and upload the Word document. Unfortunately, it will be full of unpleasant formatting errors. There'll be colours where you don't want them. The bulleted lists will come out at a different font size to the paragraphs. And it's generally not a very good experience. So if you go to Google and Google Sigil or Sigil, I don't know how to pronounce it. The first link there is where you can download Sigil, Sigil and it's free. Here it is. So if you open it up, you'll see this page and what it is, is an EPUB ready to be created. So you have all the necessary files for an EPUB. Up here you see you've got code view and book view. So if we switch into book view, you'll see nothing. Let's get the text. So in the Word document, we're going to select all and copy. And back in Sigil, Sigil, we'll paste. And here the book is just pasted in from Word. So it all looks well and good until you click on the code view and it's like holy mother of god you've got all this microsoft word rubbish in there as you can see these classes you don't need those you just want the p tag you don't even want any of the spam tags and the whole thing is littered with it and especially up the top as you can see that body tag after that all of that can go straight after the body tag but then you're straight into the H1 and there's an unnecessary span there. And if you click on this green arrow here to validate the EPUB, you will see there's quite a lot of errors as well. But the first task is to get rid of all this rubbish with your normal find and replace. So that's command or control F or search find replace. And the way I used to do it was just to get one of these spans and find and replace that with nothing. So we'll replace all there. And that's replaced 343, all well and good. But you'll find you've got other spans there that you'd have to manually replace. And this took me ages to work out until I found regular expressions. So in this find and replace box here, you go regex. And I have a list of them here. And what these do is they find all the span tags, no matter what they are, and replace them all. So this set of symbols means select everything after the word span and before the closing angle bracket. So if I copy that, and in Sigil with regex selected in mode, we can do a find and replace there. And that's got rid of all the span tags. And we can now get rid of all the closing span tags. And this is just a normal find and replace. We don't have to have regex selected, but it doesn't matter. I'll keep it like that. So replace all. And that's replaced 376. So we can get rid of all these classes on the P tags or anything after the P that we don't need in a similar way. So that's the one there. We want to replace that with a straight P tag. So here we want to replace that with the opening P tag and replace all and that's got rid of 302 of them. As you can see I've got a list of what you should do here. The first three are the most important I think. They won't all be necessary. I find that there's usually some ampersand hash 160 semicolon which I think is a non-breaking space or just a space but it's usually better to get rid of that as it kind of simplifies things. So I'm going to replace that with a space. So I've just hit the space bar there and I'll replace all of those. 
and there were 87 of them. So we've cleaned up the HTML here pretty much. There seems to be annoying things like this. Let's do a find and replace on that. That's got rid of six of those and there's a line here that we don't really need. Let's do a find and replace all on that. And that's got rid of two. But we're almost there with the formatting and that's just taken a few seconds as you can see and it's a really good tool. But it doesn't end there. There's a lot of other things we can do in Sigil to create this perfect EPUB and Kindle Mobi file. Let's validate it again. And we've only got five issues here, so that's pretty cool. And if we look into the book view, everything is looking pretty good here as well. But first of all, I'm going to do the metadata, which you just click on there and just put in the title and the author. And I'll leave it at that. Another thing you should do for an EPUB is to create a table of contents. And all you do is tool, table of contents, generate table of contents. And here you can just select up to level one and that will select all your H1s. And remember the H1s are the heading one in the Word document. So all you do is press OK and that will be your table of contents when you open it up in an EPUB viewer. However, when you open an ebook up in a Kindle device, the table of contents that I just created isn't immediately visible. You need to click on this button here to view the table of contents. However, Kindles usually have an HTML table of contents or a table of contents that's on a specific page of the Kindle. And I'll show you how to make that now. So in our EPUB, we go Tools table of contents, create HTML table of contents, as opposed to the one we just used, generate table of contents. So you go there, and there you'll see magically a table of contents created by Sigil. So now that we've done both of the tables of contents, I want to show you about the images. Now even if you've inserted images into your Word document and they come out in Sigil, they'll still be marked up incorrectly in the HTML. So the best thing to do is just to do them again in Sigil. I would make all my images a new paragraph and have them 100% width of the Kindle device. So to do that, just enter return to create a new paragraph and click the insert file button at the top. Then click other files and navigate to where your image is on your hard drive. Remember to choose images that are about 500 or 600 pixels wide and aren't bigger than 127K. And that will insert the image into your EPUB. And if you have a look at the HTML view for that image, you see it's very simple. There's no height or width specified. I'm going to take away that break because we don't need it. And I'm going to enter a better alt text as well. But apart from that, that's fine. And another thing you can do to make sure your images display correctly is to put a CSS declaration to make sure the width is 100%. And to add any styles, have a look in this folder here. And in this case, we'll see that Sigil has created a style sheet for the HTML table of contents that we created. However, if you don't have a style sheet, right click there and add blank style sheet. Another point to remember is if you go to the content.opf, there must be a reference to the style sheet there. But this is all done for you automatically by Sigil. But back in the style sheet, I want to put a couple of style declarations that are quite important. Here are the two extra styles. First of all, the image width 100% will ensure that the images fit within the width of the device that people are reviewing the Kindle or EPUB. And the H1 page break before always ensures that each new chapter starts on a new page because every chapter title is an H1. So that's the CSS. And then even though you've put these styles in the CSS and the styles are called in the content.opf, you'll notice in the HTML that was created for our TOC that these styles have a call in the header. And you need to copy that and put it in the main section of your book in between the head tags for these styles to take effect. 
Another thing you can do, which I won't be doing because this EPUB is going to KDP, but if you are creating an EPUB, you should always add a cover and you do that in the same way as adding an image. And in order to preview how the EPUB might look on various Kindle devices, as well as convert it to a Mobi file, the file used by Kindle, you need to Google Kindle Previewer. And then if you click the first link there, you can download this free software from Amazon. So if you go open book in Kindle Previewer and select the EPUB we've made with Sigil, it will actually create a Mobi for us and show us what it looks like. So you get the title at the top of all the pages, you get a table of contents that clicks through to all the relevant pages and you get a nicely formatted Kindle ebook where all the text will be the same. If it had any bullet points, they'd all be the same size text as the body copy. There's a couple of bullet points there. And you've got links and subheadings, H2s and headings, H1s, and the new chapters starting on a new page. And everything is as you would like it. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's how to create a Kindle Mobi by making an EPUB in Sigil from a Word document. My name's Rob from robcubbon.com. Goodbye.